Good evening ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm going to go over with you how to replace your motor bearings in your Scorpion 4025 series motor. Um, I'm also going to go over a few points of how to do that particularly in the Outrage Fusion 50 helicopter. It's pretty straightforward but there's still a few important points that are worth going over. So here I've got these ABEX 7 ceramic hybrids with the orange seals. They're pretty awesome bearings. I'm running them in a few other motors. Um, Aside from the bearings, what you're going to need is a 2.5 millimeter wrench, obviously, to pull the motor out. You're going to need some retaining compound, like Loctite 680, to actually hold the bearings in the motor. Uh, you're going to need regular Loctite, for example, 242, or whatever else you use, Permatex, whatever your preference is, and last but not least, a rubber mallet. A regular hammer will work too, but, you know, I... I prefer the rubber mallet. And if you have snap ring pliers, that will help. I don't have snap ring pliers, so I'm going to have to improvise with some regular pliers. But if you have snap ring pliers, pull them out because you're going to need them. And lastly, you're obviously going to need your helicopter. Right? So, go ahead and pop the motor out. And this heli, in my particular case, I use retaining compound on that lower bearing. So with me, uh, it's a little bit more involved. Not particularly involved, but I gotta remove them together and actually heat up the lower block. So I'll go ahead and pop the motor out and we'll take it from the... Alright, as you can see, I got the motor partly out of my heli. Well, it's pretty much out, but I've got it hardwired to the speed controller so I'm gonna have to work on it like this because I really don't feel like unsoldering that motor. Um, if, if you do have retaining compound on your bearing support block, which I highly recommend, you're going to have to heat that up and pull it off. Um, you're also going to want to pull the pinion off, as well as pull the motor off, off of the, the main block. Basically, you just want the motor completely out. And then you go ahead and start breaking down the motor, which is as simple as just removing the snap ring. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and pull the rest of this hardware off, and hopefully go over how to pull that snap ring off if you don't own any snap ring pliers. Alright guys, moving forward. So I've got all the hardware removed from my motor with the exception of my helicopter because for whatever reason I've got it hardwired in. Um, so I'm not going to unsolder it. There's really no need to do that. So I'm going to show you how to get this snap ring removed if you don't own a set of snap ring pliers. I don't own a, a set of snap ring pliers. I probably should, but I don't, so I'm going to show you how to do it without. All you're going to need is a set of pliers kind of like these, flat nose, fairly fine points, but broad. And that's going to go between the snap ring and the motor, and you're going to grip that snap ring on one side and pull it right off carefully. I'll show you exactly how. I'm just going to zoom in a little more here. Alright, it's a little too much. Okay, here we go. Don't forget, cradle the motor with a rag because you don't want that snap ring to go flying because you'll never find it. Alright, so carefully grab that snap ring. Whoop. This one came right off. Easy as that. All right. If you have a little bit of trouble, just carefully pry it up onto this little bevel. And then you'll probably have to pry it one or two more times around. But usually it'll just come right off. Or if you have a set of snap ring pliers, which you should, you could just use that. Also, don't forget this little washer. All right. So put that stuff aside, because you're going to need it. If you have spare snap rings, I would just use those, instead of reusing the old one. Alright, now that, now that you got the snap ring off, you go ahead and pull the motor apart. It's really easy. Just grip the rotor on one side, and the stationary portion on the other side, and just pull it apart. Um, if your motor is not attached to your heli like mine, which it probably shouldn't be, 
it's as simple as just kind of pressing down on a table and pulling the rotor right off. Uh, this is also a good time to inspect the windings of the motor for any damage, but you could do that after you pop the bearings out. Now we're going to get to the fun part. Tapping these bearings out. Start with the bottom bearing. Cradle your motor in your rag. Take your hex wrench. Insert it into. Insert it through and feel the bearing in the inside. Secure it there. Apparently I'm having a little trouble here because this is kind of an awkward position. Okay. Okay, carefully tap it with your rubber mallet. Wow. That one came right out. Now if you have any trouble if the bearing doesn't come out with just one or two taps, what you're going to want to do is, obviously from the other side, is you're going to want to alternate the side that you're tapping the bearing on. That'll that'll help work the bearing out. Sometimes they don't they don't just come right out like that, especially if it's got some use on it. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Grab it. See, this one's not coming right out. There it goes. All right. So your bearings are out. Now it's a good time to inspect the windings. Looking at my motor, it looks like something did go through there. Uh, the windings look okay. You're going to want to go ahead and, and, and clean these, I'll call them bearing blocks, but the portions of the motor that hold the bearings in, you're going to want to clean that with a non-solvent based cleaner in order to remove any residual retaining compound that was in there prior. Um, and then you're going to go ahead and install the new bearings. Alright guys, time to put the bearings in. Get your bearings, take them out of the package, clean the outer races up because there is a little bit of oil in there. Obviously, you've already done the same with your motor. Don't forget. Very important. All right. Um, put a little bit of retaining compound on a little pad. I like to do that. I don't really apply it directly to whatever I'm trying to compound in because you tend to put way too much that way, right? So I just use a little piece of music wire, and I apply the compound directly to the item that I'm trying to stick the bearings into. Like, for example, this motor here, right? Now you want very little. You want even less in here than you do in bearing blocks. Alright, just like that. Swirl it around there. Maybe a little tiny bit more. That's it. Just a thin film. That's all you want. Don't put too much. Because if there comes time to remove the bearings, you're going to have a hard time doing so. And you might get some seepage into the actual bearings themselves. Probably won't happen with these orange seal bearings, but if you're using other bearings it might. Okay? Then grab your bearing and place it into the motor. Make sure it's fully seated and wipe off any excess. Any excess retaining compound that is. Alright? That one looks good. Now we'll go and do the other side. Now I just gotta say, pardon my mess over here. I've got a lot going on right now. There's not enough room in here, <laughs> so it's a little messy. My workbench, that is. Alright, just a little bit. That is enough.
be careful when inserting this bearing. Don't put it in crooked because you might kind of get stuck there. Mm. You see? Just like that. <laughs> Alright guys, if you kind of get stuck there like me, what you could do is you could take the old bearings you removed, carefully place it on top of the new bearing, and just give it a little tap with your rubber mallet, and that should do it. Carefully. One more. There we go, fully seated. Now the reason I say use your old bearing don't just try to bang it in with whatever you have laying around is because you, you don't want to bang it in using the inner races of the bearing because then what will happen is the inner races will impact the balls, the balls will impact the outer races and the inner races and you're going to damage the races of the bearings or the race in the bearings and then you're going to have a notchy bearing you don't want that so you want to push it in by the outer race of the bearing and the only way to do that is to use another bearing unless you happen to have something the perfect size so generally you're probably not going to run into that problem but I did so if you do that's one solution just be very very careful do not contact you know you don't want to damage the windings that's the, that's the most important part of the motor it's the easiest part to damage should I say alright so now that you got the bearings installed let the compound cure for about 20 minutes and then you go ahead and install the rotor back into the motor and the reason I say to do that is because when you're installing that that rotor you could actually push this bearing out um, and then you're gonna have to kind of start all over again not, not start all over but you're gonna have to reinsert the bearing and there's no reason to do your job twice so just let the motor sit for 20 minutes alright so now that your compound is cured you go ahead and install the rotor back into the motor it's really pretty simple <laughs> you just insert the damn thing in careful what you don't want to do is A pinch your fingers and B let it snap in so you want some resistance I, I would recommend using your table but because my motor is attached to my helicopter, I can't really do that. But I'm used to it, so... Careful. There you go. Nice. Don't forget the little washer. snap ring. Make sure that snap ring is on there fully. Good. And that's it. The motor is ready. Now go ahead and attach it back to your bearing block. Replace your pinion and put it back into the helicopter. I want to come back, I'm going to talk about gear mesh. Alright guys, I'm back. Uh, as you can see, I got the motor back in the helicopter. But it's not, the job's not done yet. Uh, the motor is actually, it's loose. The mesh has not been set yet. So let's talk gear mesh. On the Outrage Fusion 50, many have had some issues with stripping gears. As you know, Outrage has come up with the CNC machined main gear to help rectify the issue with the more powerful motors but regardless of that fact they still do recommend running zero backlash now unfortunately molding processes of these gears they're not really perfect so you have to be careful where you set that zero backlash if you set it on the low spot on the gear what you're gonna get is you're gonna get a really tight mesh uh, throughout the flight as the motor cycles and you're going to get poor efficiency, probably higher amp draws, you're going to heat up the gear, and you could potentially have a failure. On the other hand, if you have 
your mesh set too loose, you could have a similar situation. It won't overheat, but the teeth won't engage fully, and you will once again have a failure. You don't want that. So what I do is I find I find the high spots on the gear, and the way I do that is I I just set the mesh with a little bit of a click. Don't really fully tighten it. Set it with a little bit of a click, and then I start to cycle the gear around, and I keep checking it as I go around. And where I, and where I see that there's no more click, I take a magic marker and I just put a little dot there. So as you see these two dots, that's one of the high spots I've got. Exactly on the other side of that main gear are the other two high spots. So those are the high spots of the gear. So what you want to do is you want to rotate those high spots. Oops. You're going to want to rotate those high spots to the pinion side of the motor and that's where you want to set the zero backlash All right. so move the motor in don't just jam it against the gear move it in just barely flush against the gear and tighten the screw on one side All right. get it in there now go around and check for that little bit of a click Alright guys, so as usual, my camera died in the middle of recording, so it cut me off. So I'm just going to start off where the previous recording left off. Um, when setting gear mesh, you want to align you want to align that high spot with your pinion. Place the motor up against the gear. Don't jam it tight. Just gently place it against the gear. Tighten one screw then you're gonna cycle the motor and listen for that little click really you're gonna feel the little click you're not gonna listen not gonna hear it alright um, make sure once again once you hit the high spots there should be no click but on the low spots there should be just a little bit you might have to do it one or two times to get the gear mesh set but once you do you will understand what I'm talking about it's really pretty straightforward and that's it. Once you get the gear mesh set, go ahead and tighten the rest of the bolts, and you're good to go. Don't forget to let the Loctite cure for maybe 20 minutes at least. I know it says 24 hours, but I've never had a problem. So let it cure for an hour, and you'll be good to go. All right, so that's it. Now you know how to change the, me the bearings out on a Scorpion 4025 series motor, or really any Scorpion motor, as well as how to set the proper gear lash on uh, this molded main gear. Alright, thanks for watching.